Hello, thank you so much for tuning into my YouTube channel. In today's video, I want to talk about digital cameras and how we could make the color reproduction better. And by that, I mean how we could make them reproduce the true colors of the objects. Let's get started and see how we could do that. As I said in this video, I'm going to show you guys a simple way to make digital cameras reproduce true colors. I'm going to also show you guys an example. The digital cameras tend to record an image at a specific RGB values which depend on the camera specifications such as its spectral sensitivity, the exposure, lens, and so on. RGB values range from 0 to 255 which are combined at each pixel to give us the final color of the objects. If the RGB values of a pixel are equal to R200, G200, and B0, the pixel will look yellow. But are these RGB values a good representation of the true color of the objects? How can we reproduce colors on digital cameras that are as close as possible to the true colors of the objects? One way to make sure that the digital cameras are reproducing the true color of the objects is to colorimetrically characterize them. To do that, we need to use a color chart. The one that we are suggesting is Macbeth Color Checker. Macbeth Color Checker consists of 24 colored patches that represent the colors we often come across on a daily basis. Using the Macbeth Color Checker, you could colorimetrically characterize your camera so it reproduces colors correctly. The way the colorimetric characterization is done is to go through a few stages as follows. First is to linearize the camera photometric response so that they would be linearly related to white rush stimulus values. In order to do that, a transfer function is derived on the basis of fitting a relationship between luminance factor and normalized digital counts of the neutral samples of the color chart. Luminance factor refers to y over y sub n, where y is the y trust stimulus value of the neutral samples of the target and y sub n is that of the perfect reflecting diffuser. And normalized digital counts refers to digital counts divided by 255 for 8 bits per channel system. So the fit relationship between the luminance factor and normalized digit count is shown as r len is equal to f of dr over dr max, where r len is the linearized camera response for red channel and dr and dr max are digital counts and maximum digital counts for the same channel. Same formula but maybe different transfer functions are written for green and blue channels of the camera. The transfer functions that are usually utilized are a 3 and 4 degree polynomial. After linearizing the camera response, we find the relationship between the RGB camera response to the Macbeth color checker and the CIEXYZ values of the same color chart using SEDU inverse method. You should note that the RGB camera response are the linearized RGB camera response. You should also note that the reason we use the color chart is that we know the spectral reflectance of each patch and therefore we could compute the CIEXYZ stimulus values of them. Now that we have the tristimulus values and RGB camera response of the target, we find the matrix M that maps the RGB camera response to the CIEXYZ tristimulus values using SEDU inverse shown as follows. Using SEDU inverse also makes sense as it is a linear model and our data have been linearized as well. Now you could easily convert the XYZ to sRGB which makes the color reproduction of objects more accurate. Now to make the pictures taken by the camera more realistically correct, you have to just go through the stages mentioned here, meaning linearizing the image, multiplying that by matrix M, and then transferring that into sRGB color space. Three simple stages. Let's show you guys an example. In this example, I used the Nikon D40 digital camera and took the following pictures. You see that I have two color charts, but I want to use the smaller color chart and use that to make the color reproduction of the camera more accurate. The small color chart has 24 patches. There are also 6 neutral patches which are used for the purpose of linearizing camera response. Let's go to MATLAB and see how we could code this problem there. To fit a relationship between the luminance factor and normalized digit counts of the neutral samples, I use Excel, which I will explain more later. After the colorimetric characterization of the camera, I will test it on the following image as well. So the camera outputs two types of images. One is JPEG and the other one is NEF, which is a raw image format typically provided by Nikon digital cameras. Because it is important to access the original data captured by the camera itself with no change to it, this raw format is used for this research. 
After extracting the raw image, it was converted to an uncompressed TIFF file using XN Convert software. Let's go to MATLAB. Okay, this is the coding part, and as you can see, I'm doing it in MATLAB 2023. First, I'm loading the data that I need. Uh, the file light source contains the color matching functions of the standard observer and also the light source spectral information. And then I'm going to be loading the Macbeth color checker reflectance, which contains the reflectance spectra of each patch. And then I'm going to be assigning that to REF variable. This is the light source. I'm using D65. This is where I'm changing the reflectance to CIEXYZ color values. And this is a standard color science formula in which the color matching functions are multiplied by light source and then that is multiplied by reflectance and then they're going to be summed up leading to color. Okay, this is where I'm reading the image. First, I'm reading the image and then I'm going to use color checker function, which is a built-in function which helps me compute the mean RGB values for each patch. So this is color checker function and then I'm going to be showing you guys the chart and then I'm going to measure each patch value in terms of RGB camera response. So this is the color table that contains mean RGB values for each patch. Okay, now that I have mean RGB values of each patch and also their CIEXYZ values, I could use them to fit the relationship between the neutral samples luminance factor and their normalized digit count. And then I'm going to use that to linearize the camera response. To do that, I'm going to use Excel, as I said. Okay, I haven't fed a relationship to this one. As you can see, this is the red channels normalized digit counts of the neutral samples, and this is the luminous factors of the neutral samples. And we want to fit a relationship between them. So we have to first choose them. Then we go here, insert. We choose this one, scatter, and now we have this guy here. And we could right click on it, add trend line, and I choose polynomial. And I'm going to show you guys the equation and also R squared value. You could see we could make it more accurate if we increase the degree of the polynomial. With third degree, it's going to be way more accurate. So it's just up to you. It doesn't matter what degree you use. I'm going to be using this equation. And you could see that the R squared value is very high. So that's how you fit a relationship between the normalized digit count and luminance factor of neutral samples. Let's go back to MATLAB. So these equations come from that. After you found those relationships, you have to linearize the camera response using these equations. And you could see that these equations match these equations here. The same with G and B channels. This is the G channels, the green channel, and this is the blue channel. Same thing. You could see that here. Now we have the linearized camera response here and we could use SEDU inverse to relate the CIEXYZ values of color chart to the RGB values of the camera. In other words, this M matrix is the one that is colorimetrically characterizing our camera. And now we could apply the M matrix to any image that is taken by our camera. First we read the image and then we change it into double precision. And then we reshape it, and then we linearize the image using the equations that we just came up with. And then we multiply the linearized image by the matrix M, which would change it into XYZ image. And then we change the XYZ image into sRGB using a standard color science formula. This is the functions that I have written XYZ to sRGB, but you could easily find it anywhere else. This is a standard color science formula. Now that we have the sRGB image, we are assured that we have the colorimetrically correct image. Now we are applying M to the second image, as you can see, the same thing as above. And then here I'm going to be comparing the characterized image to the not characterized image. Okay, let's run this and see what happens. So 
So you could see the difference between the characterized image and the not characterized image. The difference is very significant. You could see that this is the true color of the object. And this is the second image we characterized, and you could compare it with the image here, which is not that great. And this is a true color of these objects, as true as possible, of course. It's not perfect, but it's better than not characterized. And I hope you found it helpful. And that's about it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it and you were able to learn something useful. If you liked it, I would appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel and also share the video with your friends. Thank you so much and have a nice day.